Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. It's good to see everybody here on this beautiful Sunday morning. Please do take a copy of the bulletin home with you. Lots of good information in there about our parish and the surrounding area. Just to highlight a few items, one, a reminder again, our Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults, or RCIA, program will be beginning in October. If you think about people in your own life who aren't Catholic but might like to explore that possibility, we invite you to please encourage them to attend those first couple sessions for the RCIA. You can read about it in the bulletin, and the forms they can fill out are available in the gathering space. For our liturgical ministers, the liturgical ministry schedules are available in the gathering space as well, so please pick your copy up. We will continue our liturgical minister training next Sunday. That will be for altar servers, so encouraging all the people in our parish who have received First Holy Communion. If you're interested in being an altar server, great way you can serve our parish community. That training session will be next Sunday at 845. We have the training session for readers today. If you were unable to make that session but would be interested in being a reader for the parish, please give me a call. We'll set up a time to do the training for you. We are again doing our college care package program. We are, except if you know someone who's away at college you think would appreciate a care package, please fill out a form in the gathering space, drop that in the collection basket or in the church office. We are also expanding that to care packages for folks already deployed in the military and their families. So. If you would like to send a care package to someone in the military or their families, please fill out again a form in the gathering space, drop that in the basket or the office. With the college care packages, we are again accepting donations of empty Pringles cans. This helps save on the shipping costs. We cannot do the Pringles cans for the military care packages for security reasons. They have pretty specific standards of things for that. But for the college care packages, we can still use the Pringles cans. So if you're a Pringles fan and don't know what to do with the cans, Bring them in, we'll use those for the college care packages. In the gathering space after Mass today, we have the Knights of Columbus selling their annual football frenzy tickets. The tickets this year are going to raise funds for the next Knights of Columbus project. You probably noticed that the elevator project is well underway out there and hopefully will be done soon. Uh, but the next project they're looking at is doing some renovations down in the cafeteria itself and installing a handicap accessible women's restroom in the cafeteria. So if you'd like to support that, please stop and see the Knights on the way out today. As I mentioned last weekend, this weekend is also a second collection. It is the annual Catholic Education Collection. It goes to support Catholic education efforts in our diocese and 50% of it stays here to support our own Catholic education efforts, particularly our religious education program. So we ask you to please be as generous as possible in the second collection. Today is also Coffee and Donuts Sunday. We invite you to stop downstairs in the cafeteria after Mass today for some coffee, donuts, and fellowship with your fellow parishioners while also supporting our parish food pantry. Again, as mentioned last weekend, we do have a guest priest with us today, Father Bob Bono, Bono who is with us from the organization known as Unbound. So he'll talk to us about the work that they do and what we can do to help. So I know you'll offer Father Bono a, a very warm welcome. Finally, we will be having a permanent guest priest joining us, I guess you could call him that, uh, Monsignor Kaz Bogniak. In all of the changes and shifting around in our diocese with different parishes and priests, he found himself without a parish to celebrate Mass on Sundays. So, he asked if he thought we would welcome him to say Mass here on Sundays, and I said I can't think of a more welcoming community. So Father Bogniak, Father Kaz Bogniak, will be joining us on a regular basis next weekend, kind of rotating his way through the Masses each Sunday, so I know you'll offer him a warm welcome as well.
Good morning. Welcome to our liturgy this morning. Today we celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our readings can be found on page 203. Our presider is Father Bob, and our opening hymn is number 475, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. Please stand. Like, I mean, might be in the mind of things as human beings, but we don't all 
from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance. 
for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. <coughs> Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The reading today is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. We're reading uh, these weeks, and I think this is the last passage now from uh, the 18th chapter of Matthew, which is one of the five great sermons of Jesus that Matthew builds into the story of uh, Jesus' ministry. And this, this chapter is all about life and community, how we are to deal with one another, and the importance of forgiveness. So Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me. I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me, I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. And when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant! I forgave you your entire debt when you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother or your sister or your neighbor. From your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. that has application, does it not, from our teen years to married life to when we become older and we're very upset and angry about something that someone has done that we feel has hurt us. It's a challenge to be forgiving, but to forgive is a great gift. It frees one. When it, it frees both, actually. The person who offended often needs to be forgiven to be free of that memory and that attack or words or failure, whatever it was. But also the person that is holding on to that is tied down. Forgiveness frees. And that's what Unbound tries to do for people, but in a different kind of way. And listen to some of the things that our scriptures have said that, you know, our liturgies are full of words, and I'm full of words in some respects. I just add to the, uh, to the mix. But sometimes they come at us so fast we miss some of the things that are there. In our opening prayer, may we feel, feel the working of your mercy and serve you with all our hearts. We feel the spirit within us. God works 
from within us. The word comes to us from outside, but the spirit is working inside. And we need to feel that compassion of God. And so our, our psalm refrain, uh, our first reading, first of all, said, Can anyone refuse mercy to another like oneself? And what human being isn't one like me and you? We're all brothers and sisters to one another. Bless the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits. That was one of the verses of the psalm that we sang. And we don't forget. That's why we come to Mass, isn't it? Because we have a sense of God's benefits for us. We, we want to give thanks. We're aware of blessings. We're aware of being above all loved by God. And every one of us is blessed to live here in our land and in our country that has so many good things going for it. Unbound is about people who live out in the margins and don't have a lot going for them. None of us lives for oneself. We live for the Lord. We are the Lord's. We are the Lord's body. When we bring our gifts forward, the bread and the wine, it represents we're giving ourselves to God and it comes to the altar and the bread and the wine is on the altar and we believe that through our prayer together and the words that the priest speaks over the bread and the wine, it becomes the body and the blood of Christ really. But you know that bread and the wine, that represents us. And it's not just the bread and the wine that becomes the body and blood of Christ, the real presence of Christ. We become the body of Christ. And in the world, we are to be that presence of God's love and mercy, compassion and forgiveness. And then that marvelous uh, Alleluia verse, love one another as I, Jesus, have loved you. That's, we're to embrace everyone with that kind of love. How often must I forgive? Must I give, we might say, forgiveness? Endlessly. And it's not just that somebody else is in need, I am in need of giving and sharing God's love and blessings as I have received those. This is what Unbound is all about, inviting you to be conscious of the larger community in which all of us as human beings live, that is every human being on this planet. And the Unbound program works in 19 different countries uh, and in the poverty pockets of those 19 countries where people are bound down by a lack of education, an ability to get an education, by the lack of decent nourishment, decent housing, employment opportunities. I know we suffer that to some extent, but it, it's much more severe there. I like to think, you know, over the past couple of weeks we've had the devastating impact of hurricanes down in Houston, one of our most prosperous cities, down in Florida, one of our most prosperous states, you know, and we, we feel for the conditions now that those people are going to have to work their way through, but we know, we know that they'll recover from that because there's so many resources that are going to be poured into helping them. But people in these other countries, it's not because of hurricanes, it's because of the chronic conditions of the part of the world in which they live and they're tied down and can't grow into being what God has created them to be. Unbound invites you and gives you the opportunity to reach out to some one other person in some other part of the world outside our own country and develop a relationship with that person of prayer and friendship and sponsorship that can unbind them so that they can become what God is about. Pope Francis recently gave a TED Talk. Some of you may know what the TED Talks are. They're little 18-minute talks that are recorded for repetition on radio, and you can hear them generally on NPR stations on Saturdays. And they're, re they're videotaped, and so they're all available on uh, the Internet. If you Google TED Talks, you'll find an enormous library of 18-minute talks given by people who have some kind of a good idea. And they're usually, the talks are given to you know, small groups like this, but the idea of the people that started was a lot of people need to hear these ideas. So they asked P Pope Francis to give a TED Talk, and he did in April or May. I forget which month he did it. And his topic was the future you. And his theme is marvelously developed. He says the future has a name. 
And the name is hope. And hope begins with you. Or with me. And he says, one person with hope, which is one of the works of God within our hearts. You know, faith, hope, love, those are what we call the theological virtues. They're what God pours into us. One person with hope, he says, can start a change. And that one person with hope generally will attract another person with hope. So one you becomes two yous who constitute an us. And when you have an us, he says, you start a revolution. And he calls it a revolution of hope, a revolution of tenderness, a revolution of mercy, a revolution of the love of God moving out into the world. Well, that's what Unbound is all about. It started also back in the early 1980s with one Christian brother from Kansas City who was a missionary in Central America. And he spent his term there, and he really poured out his life as best he could, but when his t term of service was over there, he came back and he said, you know, there is so much need, and I did everything I could, but we have to get a whole lot more people involved in this. And that one, you so he, he was thinking about what he could do to make a difference, a larger difference than he just by himself could make. And he ran into a Jesuit priest who had been a missionary down in South America. And they compared notes and they had the same idea. So the, the one you became an us. And Bob Henson, the Christian brother, had two other brothers uh, older than he. One was uh, the head of a company in Kansas City, and the other was a lawyer, and he had a sister who was a homemaker. So Bob Henson, the Christian brother, and Jerry Tolley, the Jesuit priest, said, let's start something. And they started it in the sister's basement with the help of those two brothers. So now the one you and the two yous became a five yous. And it was a real us. And they started the Unbound program, as it's called today, back in the early 1980s. And since then, over 600,000 persons, mostly children, yearning for an education, but also older persons who want to live the rest of their life with some dignity. Over 600,000 persons have been sponsored by people like you and me. Today, over 325,000 are actively being sponsored as we sit here by over 275,000 people like you and me. Get from 275 to 325 because some sponsor more than one individual. I'm here to invite you to become part of that us, to become part of that revolution of tenderness and care in the world by choosing before you leave today, considering at least, sponsoring one of the children or one of the older persons that are on that table out there that are calling out for some kind of mercy and compassion and help so that they can be unbound from what ties them down. For children, that they can get an education or they, you know, with that education that they get nourishment that gives them enough energy to learn. And it's always basically for the education for older people for whatever they need to live with some dignity in their elder years. That's what Unbound is about. And it's, uh, to put it more simply, it's Matthew 25, whatever you do for the least of my brothers and sisters, you do for me, you who are the body of Christ. It's through us that God acts in the world today. Join us. Join the Unbound community that is striving to make a huge difference in the world and is doing it. Let me give you two quick examples. Uh, one is Maxencia. Maxencia is a now 50-year-old woman in Uganda. 17 years ago, so at the turn of the millennium, her husband died, leaving Maxencia with eight children to raise. Somehow or other, she got along until 2006, and at that point, one of her children began to be sponsored by Unbound. And that child then was able to go to school and begin to get an education. And that made a difference in the family. And when a child is sponsored, the mothers in that project area where Unbound serve, uh, serves are brought together in a circle so they can share stories with one another and they can learn from one another how to, to do better with their family. And so one of the things that the circle that Maxencia was a part of, they said, well, let's each put a few little pennies in, whatever we can each month, and get a kind of a, a fund that we can borrow money from. 
And, and they did that, and Maxentia was able to get a little microloan, as they call them today. And today, Maxentia is a pig farmer. And she has 11 pigs. And she's also raising coffee. And she, with her eight children, are economically self-sufficient and contributing to the greater well-being not only of their family, but of their community and of their nation and so of our world. That is what can happen. And it happens with a sponsorship which consists of these three things. First of all, you enter into a relationship of prayer. You pray for the person that you sponsor and they pray for you. Secondly, the development of a relationship and a friendship by a, a pen pal kind of exchange of notes and letters that uh, the child or the adult sends you a little note every so often, you send them a little note, you get their picture every year updated, you send them your picture, you get to know one another, you become friends, dear friends often. And then the third thing is a financial sponsorship at a level of $36 a month. Not a small piece of change for any of us, you know, but most of us can afford that, and a huge piece of change for the person you sponsor. It's the difference between that servant who was uh, strangled by the guy that had just been given a, forgiven a huge amount. You know, a sponsorship is a huge amount. Join us. Become a sponsor today. Whenever these kinds of programs are presented, I think there's always a, does this money really get to that person? And you'll see some flyers on the table out there. Out of every dollar you offer as your sponsorship for this individual, 92.2 cents of every dollar goes to the project and the person that you are sponsoring. It makes a huge difference. So as we continue our celebration, I invite you to be reflecting and praying over what movement of your heart might be going on that maybe I should consider reaching out in this way to one of those margins and being part of this revolution of hope and tenderness that our world so desperately needs. Thank God for your blessings. That's what we do at Eucharist. But consider whether a part of that blessing that you've received can be to share that blessing now with one of these children or one of these aging adults. I'll tell you uh, after our communion, uh, the steps that are taken there, it's, uh, it's very simple, but uh, I uh, can assure you that your investment in that person through Unbound is one of the great investments you can make in your life. Unbound is, uh, has the top rating of four different agencies that look at these kind of organizations that ask you to make a donation for this or that, uh, that assure that it is accountable, it is responsible, and it is effective. So your, your investment will be well given. But let's thank God now, conscious of uh, the many blessings we've received, and express our joy and, and gratitude for God and listen to whatever movement the Spirit might be inspiring in our hearts.
Our response is, Jesus, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Lawrence, and all church leaders, that they may continue to strengthen and give courage to those entrusted to their pastoral care, let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, hear our prayer. For all victims of senseless violence, that they may be embraced by the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, hear our prayer. For the confirmation candidates who will be making their retreat next Saturday, that through it they may grow closer to God as they prepare for the sacrament of confirmation, let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, hear our prayer. For our catechists, parents, and all who assist in religious education, that they lead others to know the living Christ through word and deed, let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, For each of us here, that we may devote ourselves to prayer, open our hearts to God's word, and strive to do his will each day, let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, that they may be surrounded by God's grace and healing love, let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, hear our prayer. For our deceased loved ones, that they may know the abundance of new life in God's heavenly kingdom, and especially for Rita Altman, who we remember at this Mass. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, hear our prayer. Our preparation song is number 476, Love Goes On, number 476.
taking chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of it, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin.
Our communion song this morning is number 415, Many in One.
Communion hymn is number 399. There is a long. joy it is to uh, celebrate with you here with the beautiful families and the beautiful children and I hope that before you leave you'll take a look at the beautiful children that are on the table out there that are looking like uh, the little ones they always come up you know and they haven't made their communion but they they, they want that that well they want something and uh, all persons we all need somebody who will give us a hand and uh, help us up. So what's the process of becoming a sponsor? Remember that being a sponsor involves a prayer relationship, developing a friendship, 
and then providing some financial support for the individual that you sponsor in one or other of these 19 countries across the world, Central America, South America, Africa, India, the Philippines, where people want to be unbound from what is binding them down. It's a three-step process that you know well. It's the process you use when you go shopping, whether you're grocery shopping or you are uh, looking for a new car or you're looking for a, a, a purse, you know, it's you take a look and then you come to a decision, it's this one rather than that one, and then you make a commitment, you buy it, okay? Uh, and that's also a very good principle for Catholic social action. How do we uh, live the call of God that we be agents of uh, justice and mercy and kindness in the world? Uh, we see a situation, we make a decision about it, and we do something. So first thing I ask you to do is to take a look at uh, the brochures that are out on the table, and the first thing is to look at the faces. You know, in our Eucharistic prayer, we pray for our deceased that they will be able to see the face of God. And we are called to see the face of God, the face of Christ, in one another the people who are in our world today. So as you uh, go around the table, look at the faces first. And maybe one of those faces, for whatever reason, will touch you. And then, just as when you're shopping, you say, oh, that looks pretty nice. I might, I might want to buy that. Then you want to get a little bit more information, and you can look and see. So this is Margaret. She's a little nine-year-old girl. And that might make a connection. I have a nine-year-old granddaughter, or a nine-year-old daughter, or a nine-year-old son. And, and, you know, it would be nice if they had somebody from Kenya who was their pen pal. So maybe I'll sponsor Margaret. And then you notice that her birthday is on the 30th of March, back in 2008. And you, I, I could say, my birthday is in March. So there's, there's all kind of little ways that you find a connection that somehow touches you and you want to take a closer look. And when you take a closer look, you open up the brochure, and inside you will find this little folder that tells you more about Margaret. Okay? Uh, she is in Kenya. She has good health. Um, you know, she employ enjoys playing football. Now, football for them is soccer. Okay? Uh, she does attend school, but it's about a kilometer from her home, and she has to walk there, and she wants to be an accountant when she grows up. But she's dependent on her grandmother, who is also taking care of her brother. And for her to stay in school, she needs some help. So you learn a little bit more, and you say, yeah, I think Margaret's the one that I want to sponsor. See, judge, act. And the action is you fill out this form on the right-hand side of the folder that will make your commitment to be Margaret's sponsor. It will be something that will, that will bring blessing to your life and blessing to hers. We have three or four individuals that are helping at the table, all of whom have been sponsors for some time. If you want to know how it works and the, the, the benefit it's been to them, talk with them. They'll be happy to tell you. So that's the process, and I hope you all, you'll all have some place to go, but it's still morning, and I hope you'll take enough time to take, risk taking a look, that you will look into God's face in the faces of those individuals that are there. I uh, had dinner with Father Mark, so I looked into his face, and I'm very uh, 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 honored and pleased that he invited Unbound to come here. And I thank him for his hospitality and all of you for welcoming me. And just as a last word, some of you might say, you know, I'm, I, yeah, I think I should do something, but I need to pray over it. Okay, pray over it. In your bulletins today, you'll find this flyer. And you can go, you can go to the online and you can sign up any time that you choose to, or you can give them an 800 number call, and they'll be happy to help you find a person <coughs> that you might sponsor. Talk to our uh, people out there about how they've done it. Thank you. Let's stand now and complete our prayer.
Our closing song is number 371, Go in Peace to Love and Serve the Lord, number 371.